Hello, beautiful community. Let's talk Putin at Valdai being particularly pathetic, but also congratulating Trump. So let's talk Trump first, patheticness second. Uh, I'm not making a fashion statement. That unfortunately, I've, I've become intolerant to one of my heart medications, and that's caused an eye problem, um, temporary eye problem. Um, so, yeah, g give a vote on how ridiculous I, I look, 0 out of 10 in the comments. So, Putin wanted to congratulate Trump, but he didn't want to do it too overtly. So, his solution was to just go on about other things and say it midway. That and this and this and that. Oh, and by the way, Mr. Trump, yes, of course, congratulations to him. And he found that that's a balance that worked for him. And in the middle of doing that, he focused on the assassination attempt, which he loved describing and describing how Trump arose and how he said fight, fight, fight and how admirable that is for three reasons. The first is that he prefers Trump to Kamala Harris. The second is that for all of the animosity toward the United States, Putin still feels deference to the presidency of the United States. Himself, Putin feels he's in a communion with history. He's beyond political leaders in the ordinary world. But as far as the ordinary world goes, there's nothing more remarkable than the President of the United States. And so even if Kamala Harris were president in a sort of disparaging and um, condescending and resentful way, he would have still somehow been a bit deferential to her. And the third reason he loved talking about it so much was, of course, that it's um, an illustration of civic strife in the United States. And he reveled in his description of that event in part for that reason. But the cumulative takeaway from his speech making at Valdai is actually about the fact that Putin perhaps went further than he has ever done in a matter of a few hours at manifesting a pattern that the wonderful uh, political philosopher, the younger generation Russian political philosopher Greg Yudin often talks about, which is how Putin can't stop talking about how many times he has got tricked and duped and unfairly um, taken advantage of by the West. Never before has Putin said more along these lines in a more pathetic way. And the Russian population is so depoliticized that they can't see that effectively, and this is Greg Eugen's point, effectively what their leader is saying, I'm here for 25 years and I have been getting tricked by the evil West every single year. They've constantly promised things they haven't delivered. They have violated all of their guarantees. They have uh, thrown out of the window any kind of semblance of respect that uh, they seem to have for us. Um, they're completely unreliable and we just kept getting tricked by them over and over and over, to which the question comes back, well, hang on, I if you are a kind of leader who is so great that they commune with history, how come you constantly and endlessly get manipulated and tricked by these Western leaders, these feeble, democratic, ever-replaceable non-entities, supposedly? But they constantly trick you, and you constantly end up feeling betrayed and surrounded and abused. D doesn't that mean that you're in a complete incompetent politically? I mean... Uh, civically awake audience immediately has that reaction to Putin because he constantly cries about being mistreated. Well, if you're claiming you're politically competent, then stop getting mistreated all the time. Never before has this theme um, that feels both sort of automated but also sort of transcendent in in Putin's discourse, being so dominant, more soon, lots of love.